one of the industries that computers have completely changed is the music business. Pretty much all of what you hear on the radio these days comes from microprocessors and auto-tune. Rhythm now comes from an algorithm. The grandfather of electronic music is the synthesizer and has a name that I just love. That's the Moog you know. Where are we going? So we are going to see the prototype Moog synthesizer. And I know you're not supposed to play favorites, much like children, but I can say that this is my favorite artifact in the whole museum. Okay. The Moog synthesizer is not only curator Kristen Gallerno's favorite, but also a music lover's dream. How important is the Moog synthesizer to the history of music? It is an absolute milestone. It's undeniable. Wherever you hear synthesized sounds, chances are it's coming from a Moog synthesizer or, or something from its legacy. Moog. Is Moog a who or a what? It's both. So it is a synthesizer. This is the prototype synthesizer from 1964. But Moog is also a person. It's Bob Moog. Bob Moog was an engineer with a heavy background in physics who applied his knowledge to musical sound. A man by the name of Herb Deutsch was a musician, composer, and educator at Hofstra University in New York and had a progressive mind for music. Together, the two men would create something brand new that would usher electronic music into the future and into the mainstream. A synthesizer, is it just basically an electronic piano or more than that? You can think of it as that. The thing with the synthesizer is that you can really change settings to make different sounds. So you can make it sound like a violin, you can make it sound like a flute, like a bass. The potential there of the sonic palette is possibly large. And the Moog synthesizer is special because it has these modules that allow you to shape the sounds in ways that was never possible before. The Moog synthesizer was preceded in the world of electronic music by the theremin. That's important. And theremin, I know, is that really spooky instrument, It is. Right? You play it without touching it. Very sci-fi sounding. <laughs> exactly. Right? That's it. it. You got it. Okay. In the early 1960s, Bob Moog was busy making theremin kits and selling them. Herb Deutsch had purchased a theremin kit. Then, Chance would bring the two men together at a music educator's conference, and Herb Deutsch saw an opportunity. So Herb Deutsch is walking around with all these sounds in his head, and then finally he meets Bob Moog and says, well, you can make these sounds I've got going on in my head a reality. Yeah, so they went down in Bob's cellar and <laughs> they started to mess around with circuits and plugging things into breadboards. The Moog prototype has descendants too, the mini Moog. The smaller versions are much more portable and they're still being made today. This right here kind of encapsulates the partnership between art and science. It absolutely does. I think that's a really important thing to think about is the balance of creativity in expressing those creative ideas and having the right kind of friends who are engineers that can help you to do those things. We may not be skilled musicians, but we thought we could still play out this psychedelic segment for you. That's quite a boat ride. <laughs> 